Well, I suppose Nisbo, if you're talking about a rugby wheel car, a month ago would probably imagine the team that got named today would be significantly different. But all of a sudden we've got a huge number of injuries. Uh, we've had to make some late changes, particularly in the midfield. Geordie Barrett's replaced by Anton Leonard Brown. My initial reaction when I saw the team is basically they're wanting the old dogs to go out there and, and tend to business while some of those injuries recover and we might see something different in about a month. Yeah, look, I think given the injuries, and we knew Retallick, we knew Frizzell for sure, given the injuries, I think that's exactly it. And I'm not at all surprised that they've gone with Anton Leonard Brown. He's had more rugby than David Havili, and you can argue the toss about who's the better. And uh, so I'm sure that's why Anton, perhaps a little surprised at, you know, and you can be a little bit facetious here in saying three open side flankers. Well, it is. No, no, you're 100% right. I mean, yeah. Ali Savia started his career as an open side flanker and the three of them together. And the only thing I can suggest about that is the fact that all of a sudden over the ground will be quick. Yep. And our ability to, to compete at the breakdown, but defensively we should be able to hold our line better. Um, the fact that we've got three really good athletes out there. Does it mean we're a little bit short at line-out time and options? I mean, we know the impact Frizzell was having. One of the things I do like about that, though, is that it gives us Luke Jacobson off the bench who covers all back row, all the back row. So if, you, if someone did pick up an early injury, he can slot into any of those positions. So I'm, I'm pretty confident with that. This, this is a big test match for Nepo Lalala and off Toanga Fasi. The fact that Tamaiti Williams, the injury to um, Tyrell Lomax, those were guys you imagined you might be involved in this test match. For those old dogs, because that's what they are, this is, this is huge. Yeah, it is. And uh, I think mobility is going to be key here. I mean, the fact that they're play effectively playing through our up inside flankers suggests to me that we want to play the game at speed. So those big guys like Leilana and Tonga Fasi are going to have to get around the park pretty quickly. And given the way it's been in Paris this week, Jeff, it's going to be 29, 30 degrees at kickoff. It's going to be tough. It's been uncomfortable, let's be honest. Yeah. It's been a touch uncomfortable yeah. in the middle of the afternoon. Um, we've had to take a little bit of a siesta, a little bit of a break. But you're right. I mean, all of a sudden you start talking about tempo. And, you know, World Cups aren't usually played with this sort of fatigue. And that's where the, the bench is going to be pretty important. And, and France themselves have gone to the 5-3 split. Mm -hmm. They haven't gone 6-2. They have had 6-2 in recent times. We dabbled with it for one test match and decided that was enough. There are a couple of talking points. Surprised that Cam Roygaard hasn't continued to get an opportunity, given the fact he, he did look good uh, against South Africa. But is that just, we've invested in Finlay Christie over the last couple of years. Is that a trust thing? What do you think the issue might have been? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, that, that, that was one of the surprises when I looked at the team. I thought, uh, surely Roygaard, after his performance at Twickenham, and there weren't too many All Blacks who uh, enhanced their reputations there, but he certainly did. I was a little bit surprised, I must say. Christie is... Uh, very much in the mould of Aaron Smith, quick around the park, and maybe that's the reason, I don't know. And, but I am pleased that uh, Fying Anuku is there because he brings that power and uh, he's a hard man to put away. A real shame for Narawa too, yeah. by the way. Yeah, let's talk about that just quickly before I want to talk about Cody Taylor. Amoni Narawa's going home on a... Uh, sadly, I mean, with Luke Jacobson experience in 2019 when you can't quite get to the starting line, Amoni's gone home with a black injury. Uh, Ian Foster talked about at the press conference here today that they're going to wait and see um, on the back of this game this weekend, which I, I think is fascinating. Um, yeah. Are they just trying to read the room, going, you know, what, what is it we might need? Um, who, who comes into the conversation for you here? Look, Ethan Blackadder is all of a sudden playing a game for yeah. Tasman. Impressive uh, last weekend. Does yes. he start becoming an option? I look, I, I thought when the team was announced, they probably got the balance slightly wrong. I, we maybe had one too many in, outside backs and were lacking just a wee bit in the loose forward department. I thought Samapini Finau played really well in that one opportunity. Yeah. He, I think he will be the next cab off the rank. I'd be very surprised if they directly replace uh, Narawa. I think they'll probably go with a forward and a loose forward, given the injury to Shannon Frizzell, which is still a bit of concern. So my pick would be uh, probably Finau. Uh, promising news around that, that Brodie Retellick's obviously really, really close. That'll be nice for them to have back on the pitch, you know, getting some time next weekend. Uh, the one thing I am looking forward to is Cody Taylor because I think he's been a bit of an unsung hero. Mm -hmm. um, from the middle of last year through the Super Rugby campaign, I think we missed him when he wasn't out there and I think he does add a lot to us up front. Yeah, and, and leadership qualities. He's very much part of the leadership group in the All Blacks, isn't he? And when he's not there... Um, you can see that things are just perhaps a little lacking in that department. So, yeah, look, I'm pleased to see him back. I really am. And I don't have any issues at all. I mean, he says he's fit and ready to go, so let's go. 
Um, look, it's not the be end and end all if the All Blacks don't win in this. I mean, we'd love them too, of course we would. But um, it's not terminal. But I will tell you this, Jeff, and you probably know that anyway, we have never, ever lost a World Cup pool game. No pressure. There's pressure on everywhere, though, Nisbo. There's, there's absolutely pressure on. What about France? Just lastly, oh, yeah. you talk about pressure, yeah. and they've had to make some significant changes in terms of some of their experience going out. How do you think they're going to deal with this pressure? It's going to be interesting. I mean, they're very passionate people, aren't they? And, and in the past, the French rugby players have always been very passionate and, uh, and shown as feelings on the park. But it, this is a new breed of French team under Gaultier. Um, they don't show a lot of emotion on the, and it's led by their skipper who shows no emotion yep. at all. You watch him in 80 minutes and see whether his expression on his face changes at any point because I have done that and he looks the same whatever the situation is. So look, I think, I think they'll react pretty well. It'll be for Dupont to make sure that the rest of the blokes are as calm as he is. Um, we've waited eight years as a team to be back at a Rugby World Cup. For you to be back... Exciting, France. very. It's, it is right. Oh my! Uh, it's, yeah. It, look, I mean, this is the culmination of. Uh, you, we work in four-year cycles, don't we? These days in 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 world rugby, and it's you know, Bledisloe Cups are important. Rugby championships are important. A lot of those games are very important. But when you come to World Cup, you know that this is what uh, this team will be judged on. They've had to build up for four years. Uh, Foster will be judged on it. Yeah. Uh, Sam Kane and the rest of the All Blacks will be judged solely on how they go at the World Cup. And you're as unbiased as it gets. Do you believe in this All Black team being good enough, not just to win on Friday night, but to go on and win this Rugby World Cup? Yeah, look, I do. I do. And because I've been around All Black teams for a long, long time. That is they, a long, long time. Yeah. And they nearly always deliver. I mean, at 80% or whatever, it's a phenomenal record. So I'm always confident. Sometimes you have setbacks. In fact, you know, probably more often than not. But I just have the confidence that this is a team that, that can do the job. It's time to get up for it. Let's bring on a Rugby World Cup like no other. Can't wait for it to get started.